Hello and welcome to more coverage of the Formula Masters China Series, the leading junior single-seater series in the Asian region. We're here in Zhuhai, back on the Chinese mainland after stops in Taiwan and Malaysia. Now this year alone, we've had drivers competing from 12 countries around the world. And with American Oliver Askew making his debut here in Zhuhai, that means that no fewer than five continents have now been represented this year. Coming up in the show, we'll take a look behind the scenes to see how this impressive series comes together. Plus, we'll have highlights of all three races from here in Zhuhai. First though, let's take a quick look back at what happened last time out in Malaysia. With the world-famous Petronas Towers directly above, championship leader Martin Rump once again led the field into Turn 1 as the series made its debut on the Kuala Lumpur street circuit. Sparks were flying as the grid flew around the bumpy, narrow track, leaving little room for error. Belgian Alessio Picariello impressed in his maiden race, pushing Jake Parsons hard for second, at one point even touching the wall, while teammate and fellow rookie Dennis Olsen was actually airborne a couple of times and limped home early. But in the closing stages, Parsons crashed out in dramatic fashion, promoting Picariello to second and Nick Rowe to third, but Rump took the honours for his fourth straight win. In race 11, Parsons started third behind Rump and Picariello, but he moved his red meritors up to second in the opening moments. Kim jong tae's spin added some extra drama for the field, while Parsons was battling hard with his rival Rump at the front. But as Rump pulled clear, Parsons himself came under pressure from Picariello, with the Australian just hanging on to finish second. Meanwhile, Rump continued his formidable form with his fifth win in a row. It was all happening in race 12. Several cars moved early on the line, while Takashi Hata lost his front wing on the first turn. Rump led from Dennis Olsen, and Shota Kiyohara's move on Jake Parsons here saw the Japanese driver into the top three for the first time. There were some breathtaking battles all over the track, not least Matt Swanepoel in the Black Arrows pushing Sean Hudspeth before finally passing him, while local hero Dan Woodruff started from the back of the grid but charged through the field for a top 10 finish. Kiyohara had a drive-through penalty for his false start, meaning Parsons moved up to third with Olsen in second, and Martin Rump's sixth win in a row gives him a 54-point lead in the championship with six races remaining. Hi, my name is Daniel Woodruff, driver of car number 16 for Team Meritus GP in the Formula Masters China Series. The highlight of my year so far will be racing on the streets where I grew up in the KL City GP. The 14-turn track is 4.3 kilometers in length and notable for a number of heavy braking corners. Now, Jake Parsons, who's just pulled up alongside me here, is, has good form on this circuit with a win here last season. He'll need to be at his very best to chip away at Martin Rump's lead in the championship and keep the series alive. Let's check out Jake's guide to the Zhuhai International Circuit. Hi, I'm Jake Parsons from Meredith's GP. Before I go out, I like to picture a clean lap in my head and then it's game on. This is a, probably my favorite main straight in the series. Just going past that big crowd is uh, really awesome as a driver. And this first corner is quite hairy. It's quite tight in the braking zone, braking past the 100 meter mark, early release to carry the speed into the apex. Smooth throttle control coming off the turn and using some curb to, to carry that speed off. Into here now, it's a great passing opportunity. Um, again, late up shifts are important and braking past the 100 meter mark, rolling a lot of speed in and uh, using a generous amount of curb off on the exit there to carry off that speed. Uh, another great passing opportunity now into this one here. Uh, had a great battle last year and changed the lead several times in the last lap actually with uh, Yin Hai Tao. And uh, getting a nice exit out of here was important. It's in the end what allowed me to win the race, uh, to just carry that top speed and, and then uh, maintain that coming into this left-hander uh, up ahead here, breaking past the 100 meter mark again rolling that entry speed in. It's quite bumpy here, so power down is important. And then just steady hands to flow off the speed through this corner here and really reduce the drag. Uh, late up shifts again, really some precise up shifts are important. Breaking past the 100 meter mark and now this got quite a big runoff area here, so you can really flow a lot of speed off um, and just follow it all the way to the edge of the track. Here we come into the last corner on the circuit. This one's definitely the hairiest. A light touch on the brake and then just trying to hang on to it, uh, dragging off all the speed to the exit, and that's a lap. 
Well, again, the focus is on Estonian Martin Rump. Pole position once again, looking for his seventh consecutive victory here in the Formula Masters China Series. He'll be joined on the front row of the grid by the South African Matt Swanepoel, who had impressive form here in Juhai last year with two pole positions, so no stranger to the front row. Then behind them comes Belgian Alessio Piccariello, who's been quick all weekend long alongside Jake Parsons, who starts in position number four. Then Aidan Reed in fifth, bouncing back strongly after a difficult weekend in Malaysia. Sean Hudspeth in sixth. Dan Woodruff in seventh. The three Star Racing Academy drivers, Zheng Shengguan, Yuanbo, and Jeffrey Air, start in eighth, ninth, and tenth, respectively. Nick Rowe has struggled this weekend. He starts in twelfth. He actually fitted a new engine overnight to try and solve some of his problems. And William Locke is the last man on the grid today. He starts in sixteenth position. Martin Rump will now start alone on the front row with Matt Swanepoel forced to start from pit lane. You can see him on the far left of the screen there after a gearbox issue on the formation lap. So Rump will comfortably lead into turn one. Then comes Picariello, then Jake Parsons, Aidan Reed, and Sean Hudspeth as the rest of the field follow in the early stages of race 13 here. William Locke at the back of the field having issues early on. Now coming out of turn seven, Picariello forced wide by Rump as he tried to make a move, plowing down the strip there. Back on track, but it looks to be okay. On board now with Oliver Askew on his series debut. Oh, and that's Tomoki Takahashi clipped there on his back left wheel. That's the end for the youngster. Let's check out the replay. And Takahashi hits not one, but two of the KCMG cars there. Plenty of debris left on the track, but he manages to pull his car across and get to safety. So Martin Rump completes his first lap as the leader. Then comes Alessio Picariello, Jake Parsons, Aidan Reed, Sean Husbeth, Dan Woodruff. And that's the green helmet of Nick Rowe up in seventh, five places up from where he started. Rowe now looking to make a move along the inside of Sean Husbeth, the Singaporean. Can he make it stick here? He can, up into sixth. Impressive start from the Australian. Sean Husbeth swings out down the home straight to cover a move by Yuembo, but Yuembo's going to get past him. Nice move there by the Chinese driver. Five cars right together. Yuembo, then Husbeth. Then comes Jeffrey Air. Oh, and he's gone a bit wide here on the strip. Oliver Askew in the black and red absolute racing car will take advantage. Husbeth and Sean Jung side by side there. Jung tries to go around the outside of Husbeth, but he's gone too wide and Askew goes up one more place. Back comes Sean Jung. Exciting stuff in the closing stages of race 13. He pulls wide the young Star Racing Academy driver, takes back the place almost immediately from the American. But they're still not done. Great battle towards the middle of the pack here. Jeffrey Air now comes past Askew to go up one place. Good recovery after he went off the track. Martin Rump seconds away from another win in this championship. Still pushing, as you can see, sliding around the final turn. He takes the chequered flag. That's seven in a row for the Estonian. Picariello in second, Jake Parsons in third. I mean, the race went really well. And uh, obviously, Alessio was catching me pretty well. So I had to make sure he stays behind and uh, work really hard to get to the finish. Seven wins in a row for Martin Rump means he now has a 63-point lead over Jake Parsons in the championship standings. Yuembo, the top Chinese driver in race 13 with a seventh place finish. 15 drivers completing the course with Tomoki Takahashi crashing out early. Hi guys, I'm Aidan Reid from Eurasia Motorsport and my highlights from this Formula Masters China season was my double podiums at Sepang. Out on the track, it's the drivers who take the spotlight with their hard-fought racing and battles throughout the field. But none of this would be possible without a tireless team of workers dedicated behind the scenes, all making this the best possible platform for young drivers looking to make a name for themselves. I've been involved with single-seater racing in Asia for over a decade, and working with the Formula Master China Series has been a great experience so far. I think they're setting uh, new standards. 
we have a huge team of people making the series happen and uh, putting the show on the road. First and foremost, obviously, we have our race director, Ravin, who who is in charge of directing the race and all the on-track uh, action. I'm looking mostly on uh, infringement, uh, any problems like jump starts, hitting the pit lane, or contacts between two cars. I'll look at that and advise the stewards, and stewards will ultimately advise me uh, we should proceed with the penalty or not. But most concern is my, the safety of all drivers. Also a very important uh, person is uh, a technical scrutineer who makes sure that all the cars comply with the regulations. Uh, we have Trevor, Trevor Johnson from the UK, who has a, a wide breadth of experience. He looks for any technical infringements, any things that, uh, that could gain a potential advantage, maybe slight modifications that are not allowed. One of the uh, key people in our team also is Alan Bay, our technical director. He has been involved in uh, developing the, uh, the engine and the chassis together and came up with a great product, uh, a very nice, nicely balanced car. Also, we have uh, a dedicated team of uh, stewards, series stewards that travel with the series. So if there's any infringement that is established by either the scrutineer or the race director, he will refer it to the stewards and they will uh, decide on a penalty. Very important in racing is uh, is the tires and we are very lucky that Formula Master China Series has GT as their tire partner. They have a team of 25 people on site at the racetrack at every race weekend. Uh, they sometimes need to change 100 tires within an hour so they sometimes get very very busy. Apart from the direct race organization there's obviously a large team with supporting roles. For example we bring our own tents, uh, there's a team that sets up these tents, the partition walls, the offices. Then we have a dedicated logistics team. All the, the, the entire uh, series travels in 15 sea freight containers. They need to travel from country to country, so we need to deal with custom clearances, which is especially difficult sometimes with cars. Hospitality for us is very important. We want to create a conducive environment with very nice food and a premium experience. We even bring a complete kitchen with ovens, cookers, ice cream machines. We have our four Italian uh, chefs that also come to each and every race, and uh, we've often been credited for having one of the best food at the racetrack. We first prepare the starters, and then the meat and the fish dishes. We do pizza and pasta live cooking. Uh, Formula Mass is such a great series and obviously we want everybody to know about it and be part of it. So we try to be very active on social media, TV, print media, magazines, papers. Uh, motorsport magazines. As you can see, we have a huge team of people involved with the series that all make this show happen. It's a great, a great team and a great effort. Well, we've just seen how this series comes together. One of the key people responsible for that is Lucas Pietermeyer, who joins me now. He is the senior motorsports manager from the Volkswagen Group China. Lucas, we've been asking the drivers what the highlights of their season has been so far. What's been yours? For sure, one of the highlights uh, has been to see the progress our Chinese drivers are making, especially our uh, Star Racing Academy drivers. For example, Sean Zheng will start from the third position on the grid later this uh, afternoon in race three. So it's really good to see the progress these guys are making here. Good stuff, thanks Lucas. Well, let's take a quick look at the grid for the middle race of this race weekend. Uh, familiar foes once again, Martin Rump in pole position alongside Alessio Piccariello. And I can tell you there was a bit of bad blood between them after yesterday's race because of what Piccarello thought he was shunted off. So he'll be looking to put one over on Rump uh, in today's race. Uh, Jake Parsons starts in position number three. Aidan Reed up to fourth. Dan Woodruff in fifth. Then comes Chinese driver Yuen Bo in sixth. Matt Swanepoel, Oliver Askew, the new boy, in eighth. Jeffrey Air, Nick Rowe, Sean Jung, Sean Hudspeth, Takashi Hatta, William Locke, Stephen Hong, and Tomoki Takahashi starts from the back of the grid because he was unable to record a fastest lap time after his crash in the first race. And that is, of course, how the grid is decided for this middle race of the weekend. Lights go out and race 14 is underway in front of a packed grandstand here at the Juhai International Circuit. And Alessio Piccarello in second place has got a blistering start. Closed up on Rump. Parsons, the red 27 car, maybe got through as well. Not the start Rump wanted at all. Let's take a look. Uh, Piccarello in the lead. Rump is still holding on to second. Parsons in third. And look at Uembo. He's got past Reed and Woodruff for fourth. Great start for the Chinese driver. Woodruff and Reed side by side. Reed just keeping his nose in front. Swanepoel also in the action. Action pack start as always in the Formula Masters China Series. A 
Scott Parsons right behind Rump in second, trying to keep his championship hopes alive. Some heavy braking there from the Australian. This track is known for that. And Jake Parsons looks to have a bit of an issue as Uembo and Reed both go past him easily. Jake Parsons in the red Meritus now in fifth position, dropping like a stone as Nick Rowe pushes him another place further down. Disastrous for Jake Parsons as Tomoki Takahashi again going off the circuit here in Juhai, this time getting his car back on track. Vicariello starting to open the slightest of gaps on Rump, Uembo locking up behind them. William Locke also with some heavy braking here. That's the American Oliver Askew still getting to grips with the car on his debut weekend. He's stationary but facing the wrong way on the track. Oh, and that's Dan Woodruff pulling some unintentional donuts. Big spin from the Malaysian at the top of the home straight. And I can't remember an opening lap with this much drama. The safety car will be out for sure. It's middle race of the weekend, just a seven lap sprint, of course. So let's hope the safety car isn't out for too long. Let's take another look at the starts on board with Dan Woodruff. And watch Alessio Piccariello in the top right hand corner of the screen. A blistering start from position number two. Closes up on the leader rump almost immediately. Then Parsons breaking hard in third. And Uembo coming around the outside of Woodruff up into fifth place. Another replay here from William Locke's car and watch the group in front very close. Looks to be contact as Oliver Askew spins around. That ends his race. And then at the end of the lap one, this was Woodruff's spin. Runs wide on the exit, fights hard to get back, catches the gravel and then loses it. Breathless stuff. So the safety car is in. It's Picariello, Rump, Uembo, Reed, and Rowe, the top five, as we get back to racing. But perhaps not for very long because one of those super licensed cars is in trouble. And that's a pretty dangerous spot. So almost as soon as the safety car had gone in, it's back out. Well, more drama, and here's another replay. Keep your eyes at the back of the pack there. Sean Hudspur's car is launched into the air as he hits the back of Jeffrey Ayer's car. Hudspur's car, I think, is okay, but look at the damage to the back of Jeffrey there. Jake Parsons also in the pits. He had that issue earlier, and that appears to be that for the Australian. And the result of Parsons' retirement means that Martin Rump, now in second place here, is going to be on the verge of claiming this year's title. He will need to overtake Picariello to win it outright in this race. But the Belgian has looked very comfortable. Just his second race weekend with the series. 16-year-old Aidan Reed there making a last gasp bid to get on the podium. But Uembo covers over to defend. Alessio Picariello wins race 14 from Martin Rump and Uembo. Rump's win streak ends at seven. But a few more points and he'll have the title. So yesterday race was uh, a bit hard for me, but uh, you know, that's racing and uh, today uh, I think we are where we belong to be. The team is working hard, I work hard, so this is good. The 22-year-old Belgian driver Alessio Picariello breaks the dominance of Martin Rump with his maiden win. Yuan Bo Chinese driver in third place. Five drivers unable to finish in this action-packed seven-lap sprint. Hi guys, my name's Nick Rowe, and the highlight of my 2015 Formula Masters China Series season would have to be getting third of the KL Street Race. The crowd was amazing and the racing was absolutely nuts. Well, the second qualifying session that decides the grid for the third and final race of the weekend, extremely tight at the front of the pack. Belgian Alessio Picariello just beating out Martin Rump by a fraction of a second to claim pole position. But the story here is that in position number three, Zhang Shangguan, or Sean as he's known, young Chinese driver, his best performance of the season, fantastic qualifying session for him, and he'll be looking to convert that into a sizable number of points during this race. He lines up alongside Dan Woodruff on the second row, then comes Matt Swanepoel, Jake Parsons, Sean Hudspeth, Oliver Askew, Aidan Reed, Yuenbo, Tomoki Takahashi, Jeffrey Ayer in 12th, Nick Rowe, Takashi Hatta, William Locke, and Stephen Hong rounds out the field. Alessio Picariello gets this race underway from pole position. Martin Rump will be hoping to do what was done to him yesterday and overtake. But the Belgian looks to have protected his lead into the corner. Rump is second. Dan Woodruff has passed Sean Jung to go up into third. And Sean Jung desperately trying to take back third position. 
Now Swanepoel attacks Jake Parsons for fifth position. Oh, some sliding around in the middle of the pack there. So Picariello still. No, Sean Jumbricky, he's hit one of the Meritus. They've taken each other out. Jake Parsons and Dan Woodruff both crashing out there. The two cars did appear to have a significant amount of damage. So let's hope this safety car isn't out for too long. Let's take another look at that incident. Sean Junk comes over and hits Parsons, who then takes out his teammate, Dan Woodruff. On board now with Oliver Askew eyeing up Uembo of the KCMG team. And this is the part of the track where those two Meritus cars slid out, sliding through the sawdust, picks up a place. So Picariello still leads, rump in second. Sean Jung holding on to third place from Matt Swanepoel behind him. Oh, there goes Nickro darting down the inside of Uembo. Alessio Picariello comes through to win race 15 here in Juhai, but Martin Rump in second place takes the season title. Oh, Matt Swanepoel in the closing moments gets the last place in the podium, just nipping past Sean Jung for third. one single highlight that you could pick out from the season as a whole that, that maybe stands out for you? Uh, yeah, I think this moment because uh, I won the championship. Alessio Picariello makes it two wins out of two, but Martin Rump takes the title after a second place finish. Matt Swanepoel in third. Sean Jung was given a 30 second penalty for causing that incident between the two Meritus cars, so he drops all the way down to 13th. Confirmation then that Martin Rump is the 2015 Formula Masters China Series champion. With three races to spare, Jake Parsons currently in second, Nick Rowe stands in third. In the team classifications, Cebu Pacific Air by KCMG with 348 points lead the way. Meritus.GP second with 236 and Eurasia Motorsports in third. It's all smiles at times like these when the drivers get to meet their fans, but on the track, it's fiercely competitive. Let's check out one of the moves of the weekend in our Masters Pass. Today's Masters Pass comes from Star Racing Academy driver Uembo with a textbook move down the home straight in front of the packed grandstands to go past Singaporean Sean Husbeth. Belgian Alessio Picariello walks away with two wins from this weekend. Martin Rump wraps up the title and some top performances from some young Chinese drivers as well. Three more races still to come. We'll see you all soon in Shanghai. Goodbye.